I'm in the middle of Paris. I've got loads of water. I'm going to try to give it away in French. Oh, gratuit? Go some? No? The soif? Oh, gratuit? So it's surprisingly hard to give away free water. Yet, in just 25 years, everyone on the planet is going to be affected by a lack of fresh water. This is valuable stuff. But people don't really know how much water they use in one day. Do you? Uh, a bon litre and demi. How many? Maybe three. 20 litres, de, je pense. 6, 7 litres, je sais pas. You use, on average, 3,400 litres of water a day. 3,000. Plus de 3,000. 3,000? Oui. Just me? No. No. In fact, of all the water on the Earth, only 0.5% of it is available to us as fresh water. And that is running out. But fortunately for us, there's a community of researchers who study very real risks like these and how to prevent them. Their work is supported by AXA, and their aim is to make our lives safer and healthier. This is Esther Delborg. She's a researcher. Say hi. Hi. She's a researcher into water economy. The amount of water that we consume. It's known as your water footprint. I read that apparently I consume 3,400 litres of water a day. First, you have the water that you know you consume, like the water you use for drinking, washing, flushing the toilets. Um, and that's about 250 litres of water per day. But that leaves well over 3,000 litres of water. What's happening is that the rest of the water you consume every day is embedded in the food you eat. And that's what we call virtual water. I'm eating 3,000 litres of water. Exactly. And I'm going to show you. Esther, what are we doing? So today, Greg, we're going to go shopping, but we're going to pay for what it costs in water. Come on. Oh, OK. Okay, how about one tomato? So, so that would be six litres of virtual water. Okay, so that would be 12 of these. Okay, sure. all right. Ah. Well. <laughs> one potato. 15. 15 litres of water. Yeah. I, I don't have enough. An apple, that would be 40 litres. 40 litres? Right, dinner is going to be one tomato. Um, how about a glass of wine? Well, that would be 120 litres. What? So now you see that 92% of the water we use is actually to produce our food. Take beef, for instance. By the time you've watered it, fed it, run the farm it lived in, and taken it to the market, you've actually used 16,000 liters of water per kilo. But hang on, surely most of that water is just going to come from the rain? Well, it does, but rain is what we call blue water. Blue water is water you can see around you and extract to use. So rain must be part of that. Streams, rivers? Lakes, aquifers, underground? Exactly. Yeah. But blue water isn't the only water available to us. We also have what we call green water. Green water is the water you can't see. It's stored inside the earth, the trees, the plants. But it becomes an issue when we extract too much stored blue water before the rain can replenish it. OK. Here in southern Spain, they grow loads and loads of fruit and vegetables. But the ground is very dry. There's very little green water in the soil. They collect as much rainwater as possible. Plus, they grow everything in polytunnels to keep as much of that water in. But it's just not enough. So they have to pump valuable blue water out from underground stores. If one tomato takes six litres of water to grow, imagine how much this lot takes. Food grown here has a much bigger water footprint than food grown in wetter places. I want my research to help people make better choices about water and how much they consume. So what better decisions can we be making? Well, there's a lot we can do, uh, but we could start by consuming this kind of cattle from a wet country with a smaller water footprint than, say, cattle coming from a drier country. So the same goes for everything. Take tomato sauce, for instance. One comes from Italy, one comes from China, but it takes twice as much water to produce a tomato in China than in Italy. So if you're looking to save water, you should take the Italian tomato sauce. But the Chinese one is so much cheaper that you will take that one, and that's what most people do. So in the end, you know, maybe we should put a price on water if we want to help people choose their food more sustainably. Maybe it will come to that at some point. 
So there you go, now you can see why water is definitely the most valuable resource on the planet. What about this one? Free water? Sure. Oh, gratuit? Yes. Free water? Thank you. Oh, gratuit? Yeah, thank you. <laughs>